It's Friday night in Cardiff, South Wales, and paramedics Adrian and Graham are heading to an emergency on the edge of the city. It's the first call-out of the night, and they must be prepared for every eventuality. That means everything they might need must be carried right here in their ambulance. Designing and equipping this high-tech casualty ward is a miracle of mobile first aid technology. So how do they do it? This is Brighouse, West Yorkshire, in the north of England, home to one of the world's leading manufacturers of ambulances, UV Modular. UV Modular have been making ambulances for over 40 years, and the new fleet of 100 vehicles currently in production is one of their most advanced designs so far. It uses a standard Mercedes chassis. What makes it special is the design of the main shell. This two by three and a half meter body must contain all of the essential equipment found in a hospital emergency ward in a space little bigger than a delivery van. The man who must make sure it all fits is design engineer Mark Hugel, and he has just six weeks to do it or the fleet won't be ready in time. It's a hard thing to do in six weeks because there's a lot of parts within the vehicle. One of the hardest things is making sure that the weight calculations are correct that we don't overload the axles front or rear or left side to right side. It's all got to be well balanced. If there's too much weight on the right side or the left side, then there's a possibility of it losing control of the vehicle. With the design complete, the factory team can begin manufacturing the main bodywork. This bodywork needs to be both extremely lightweight, yet also capable of withstanding a crash. So it's created from a combination of a steel framework together with aluminium struts and panels. These form a sandwich construction, which is bonded and welded to the main chassis. Next, it's down to sparkies like Richard Lane to install some serious quantities of electrical cable. Since I've been working here, I've put in about 6,000 miles of wire. The reason for so much cable is that all the lights, medical equipment and air conditioning are on their own protected circuits. That means Richard will install an amazing 10 kilometers of wire into every vehicle. But the walls have to carry more than just wiring. They're also fitted with a network of pipes to carry heating, air conditioning, and the oxygen necessary for the life support system. To complete the interior walls, a layer of foam insulation is fitted before everything is covered with rigid PVC sheeting to create a hygienic sealed surface. All the storage units are carefully designed to ensure equipment is kept secure in transit, whilst being hygienic and positioned for easy reach. With the interior fitted, the team turns its attention to the rear lift. In the past, paramedics would have been faced with the back-straining job of lifting patients by hand. But now, thanks to this pneumatically powered ramp, they can smoothly lift a load of up to 350 kilos at the push of a button. With the bodywork complete, they can finally fit the essential medical equipment, including a defibrillator, a resuscitator, oxygen tanks and chest pumps. For paramedics like Graham Willis, Learning exactly how to make the most of this equipment is vital. It's basically a miniature version of an A&E ward. We haven't got the facilities like you'd see in an A&E ward, but we've got all the basic life-saving equipment on board to treat people on the scene quickly in an emergency. Each ambulance costs up to £120,000 and requires 100 hours of careful work to complete. Finally, after a series of stringent electrical tests, it's almost ready for action. But first, the only way to be sure how a new design like this will handle in practice is to take it for a spin on the test track. Once in service, the ambulance will need to handle being driven at speed in every condition imaginable, and it needs to be completely reliable. Fortunately, the new design is proving extremely stable. 
and to demonstrate just how smooth the journey is for the patient, whilst the ambulance weaves through the slalom course, volunteer Gary attempts to hold a glass of water in the back. Not a drop spill. But the real test is, of course, when the vehicle is used in an emergency. And back in Cardiff, paramedics Adrian and Graham are tending a patient. It's OK, try and relax, OK? Fortunately, his condition is stable. But he needs to have further tests, so it's into the ambulance and off to the hospital. Modern ambulances are an extraordinary combination of cutting-edge medical technology and mechanical engineering, allowing these mobile emergency wards to give us the best possible chance when faced with a medical emergency.